is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here we're going to talk about several different horror topics in this video here today we'll be talking about saw 11 we'll talk about the predator franchise we'll talk about i know what you did last summer scream 7 and chucky so starting off here with the saw franchise more specifically saw 11 shawnee smith and costas mandalore gave comments about the film recently now i got these comments from saw space who has been quite reliable for inside information on saw films they shared this over on twitter I'm assuming these comments were made at a recent 20th anniversary screening or some type of event dedicated to the film's 20th anniversary since it's been 20 years since the first movie dropped. So this is what Shawnee said. She said, we're working on Saw 11 to make it worthy. It's going to be a blast. Cecilia is the most deserving of being in a trap. I cannot disagree. I actually want to see uh, Amanda get her lick back for the slap Cecilia <laughs> did to her at the end of Saw X. Now you can say she got that back when they revealed the twist and trapped them in that room. That's not enough for me. Something about that slap just didn't sit right with me. So hopefully Amanda can get her comeuppance when it comes to Cecilia during this next film. Costas had this to say. He says, Shawnee's ready for Saw 11. I'm not allowed to say anything about the next one. Otherwise, I'll get killed before my time. Now, the last official, well, not official, but from viewer non who is quite reliable. We've been hearing about this butting heads between producers. But everybody seems to be in agreement on what Kevin wants to do. But it's just coming to an agreement between the producers and then when that is done we can move forward and get saw 11. like i stated if saw 11 fizzles out i am content with saw x being the point of the end of the franchise and i know many people would agree now let's talk about the predator franchise so we have an update on the secret predator project multiple sources told io9 that the secret predator project is in fact an animated feature as many speculated the twist though is it's almost an anthology telling three separate stories of predators fighting warriors in multiple eras one is potentially pirates one is potentially samurai and there's a third one too it says here we reached out to disney for comment on this but had not heard back as of publication i need this to be confirmed because the animated anthology stuff seems to me like this is inspired by what dan decided to do with prey i remember when prey first came out people were saying okay don't do prey 2 but do another film set in a certain type of period the way prey was like with the native americans now they're gonna do pirates now they're gonna do samurais so hopefully this is truth we'll see what comes of this let's talk about i know what you did last summer so I don't know who this person is a lot of you don't know who she is either but think they are a model gabriette is supposed to be starring in i know what you did last summer filming is reportedly underway in australia as of now now this came during an l magazine interview where the model confirmed this and in this magazine it was also referred to i never forget what you did last summer the interesting thing is that if that's true then the director lied to protect the title recently or could this just be the working title because the director already came out and shot down production weekly listing the film to be titled as i never forget what you did last summer she said it's not that title so now that l magazine is saying it i'm like wait a minute were you lying or is l magazine just mistaken what is the source of the information i don't know as far as who gabriette will be playing i also have no clue i'm not familiar with gabriette's talent for those of you who are familiar with her let me know if this is something that i should be looking forward to or not but from what i could gather it looks like she is an influencer of sorts and at best i would have to predict maybe they're going to be the opening kill the kill that sets everything in motion at this wedding engagement party and we'll go from there they could be the climate influencer that one of the characters is rumored to be crushing on but I, I, I just don't have much to say because I don't know who this person is. One thing I know that has a few people concerned is that if filming is reportedly underway, where is Jennifer Love Hewitt? The only thing I can say to that is this. Jennifer Love Hewitt, if she signed, probably did it weeks ago. And the only logical reason she isn't on set right now since Gabrielle was spotted with the cast and crew at a concert. And that's what led to some people speculating that she was in the movie anyway. The only reason why I could see Jennifer Love Hewitt not being there is because they're shooting the film in order. Julie is not going to be at the beginning of this film. I think that's just a given. She's not the main focus. There's a whole new group of characters that are going to be the focus. So Julie isn't going to appear till probably midway through filming. And that's probably why we haven't gotten the confirmation that Jennifer Love Hewitt is back yet. Or maybe Jennifer Love Hewitt just isn't going to be back. I have to stress this really quick. 
she was never necessary. She's not necessary. Some of these characters love them to death, but I, I, I can't just live in a world where I say they're necessary for these franchises to live on or for these franchises to be revived. No, they're not. The general public, if you market your film well, the general public will show up. Especially a slasher film, if it's made very cheaply, you don't need to bring certain characters back. No, you don't. It just would make sense for certain franchises to bring certain characters back. In this case, there's nothing so far to me that proves gen that Julie needs to come back. They're imp she's important to the story, allegedly, from what we've heard. But I, I still haven't seen where she even comes into this. But I have no doubts that Jennifer Love Hewitt's involvement will be confirmed in the coming days, weeks, who knows. Let's talk about Scream 7. Melissa Barrera was giving comments to Decider and she said that she hasn't spoken to Nev Campbell since her firing from Scream 7, but she does respect her decision. She said, we haven't really spoken. I think everyone makes their choices and what they think is best for them. I fully respect what people think that they need to do to keep going in this life. This has gotten a lot of polarizing reactions online. People are using this as reasons to start hurling slurs and attacks at both women as usual. And all I can say about that is this kind of backs up what I was saying when I was alluding to the fact that it's possible Melissa isn't that bothered by this in the way that many people think she might be. And what I mean is Melissa has things on her plate. Thankfully, what they tried to do doesn't seem like it worked. And she doesn't have time to worry about Scream 7 like that. She doesn't have time to hold grudges. It was a very light comment for her to give in regards to Nev. I don't think this is her being shady or anything like that. I sincerely don't think she holds anything against the people participating in this film. She herself, as an actress, understands that there are a lot of opportunities that are just drying up out there. There's a lot of opportunities that these people, again, were spending the year telling us that they were fighting for when they were on strike. So, of course... Melissa doesn't seem like someone who's unreasonable and doesn't seem like she's going to be upset at people who sign on to do Scream 7. She just was making it clear that what Spyglass tried to do is not true. I've yet to see anything come out that proves that what they were labeling her as is true. So if you want to educate me on how it was true, go ahead and take a swing. But so far, everyone that swung has been missing. It seems like it's also rooted in just, oh, it must be true because I never liked her anyway. Well, it's like, that's not reality. That's not how reality works. I can dislike someone, but if you're lying on them, just because I dislike someone doesn't mean that the lie is true. That's very delusional. But I also have to say this. A lot of people have got to stop using what's happening to be nasty towards both women. Meaning, I should not be going online and seeing Nev Campbell referred to as the H or the W slur, the B slur. I'm just not interested in saying those words about that woman because I, I don't have a problem with Nev Campbell. I don't have a problem with Melissa Barrera. There's no reason to be telling her to go back to Telenova, all of these other racial slurs. It feels like people are infiltrating things that people are quite passionate about when it comes to why they're boycotting. And you're using it as an excuse to be misogynistic and just be nasty towards them in ways that have nothing to do with the subject at hand. Yes, you can criticize her. Why are you wishing death on her? Why are you calling her all of these things that have nothing to do with the topic at hand? You can you can call her greedy. You can call her a lot of things. But what what grounds are there to call her the W word, the B word? And again, I'm saying that stuff because I don't want to call her those things. I don't even want to reference them towards Nev. I have no problem with Nev Campbell. I have no problem with Melissa Barrera. So let's talk about Chucky. Chucky, according to Don Mancini, is going to be doing what we all thought he would do. He put out this tweet saying the Chucky franchise has always prioritized story continuity across different media for decades. You will see your favorites again. Now, in the pictures, he obviously has the trio. Then he has Jennifer uh fiona and kyle's actress i can't remember her name christine so it's doing what we thought it was going to do meaning the story of jake probably isn't over it's going to be materialized in some way in the upcoming movie lexi's story isn't over it's going to materialize in some way in the upcoming movie i can only say this 
The problem was never the characters. The problem was never the characters, not for me. For those of you who are being nasty about it in different ways, I'm not I'm not a part of any of that. The problem isn't the characters. The problem is the way you are presenting them. People are tired of the fact that it seems like when Jake and Devin were on screen, you weren't giving them anything to do. And Lexi had too much of a leg to stand on compared to them. It just was an uneven viewing. And as someone who cares about all three, I would have liked to see all of them have something to fight for when it comes to Chucky. Jake and Devin compared to Lexi, they were just uninteresting because they just seemed like they were along for the ride and it was just wearing thin my interest. You need to give those two characters something to do. And then on top of that, tone down the wackiness. For the love of God, tone it down. Some people like it, others don't. So find that balance. Find the Bride of Chucky stuff. Just give us a balance. Hell, do, just do a Child's Play 3 Chucky movie and most people I would imagine are going to be satisfied. And for those hoping Don Mancini is not going to direct or write the next Chucky film, I would say you can get that out of your head. I was able to lock in that he does in fact, as he revealed in 2017 on something that's now under a Patreon wall, he does have a right of first refusal. Meaning Universal will be offering him the job first and he has to say no before they can offer it to someone else. So Don isn't going anywhere. The only thing I can hope for is that Don will bring in a co-writer or something along the lines of just learning how to tone down that wackiness. A lot of people like it. Some of us are sick of it. The ones that are sick of it, that does not mean you're not a Chucky fan. I'm going to continue to speak for you guys because I see so many say that you aren't Chucky fans. You're a Chucky fan and you would like to see the Chucky of old. And you're not wrong for that. Just like how the ones who like the wackiness are not wrong. But there needs to be a level of understanding that at one point, Chucky was scary. That's not to say that Chucky was giving me freaking nightmares. No, but the tone presentation at one point, it was to be taken a little bit more seriously. Chucky wasn't blowing up the North Pole. But let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you want me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.